Hello. Hello. I'm Mark. And I'm Joe. And this is Finish Big. Big. Oh, we we're going to say that together, yeah, were we? You know, <laughs> just trialing something new. Uh, we are talking about Big Finish releases from the start. Oh, you're waiting for me to say something. And yeah, what are you going to say? I was going to say, we're chipping off Doctor Who this week for a rip roaring adventure TV series from the 1970s. Yes, and it's not Plague 7. It's. <laughs> the... <laughs> Although we'll get there. <laughs> we will eventually. <laughs> we should point out that Big Finish have dipped their fingers into every single Telefantasy series in the 1970s. I mean, they've done Star Cops, they've done Blake 7. Yeah, people only get factor. Yeah, they Terror Hawks dips their ears <clears throat> into many pies. <laughs> well, there's a few uh, gaping omissions, though. Isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure there are. <laughs> what, like what? Um, oh, I just thought of one. Now I can't. There must be something they haven't done. They haven't done like Quatermass, have they? No, they've um, done the Avengers. Mm. Um, there's not much they haven't had a go at. <laughs> really <laughs> or they and I'm sure I mean what would like I don't know all the Jerry Anderson stuff is coming around so Survivors mate, Survivors oh, yes amazing can I just say I know we're nowhere near Survivors yet Mark has recently introduced me to the world of Survivors and it's fucking bleak I'll tell you but amazing amazingly good drama so this The Tomorrow People is their first oh yeah this is less amazing jaunt into another <laughs> series that isn't Doctor Who it is. And um, you and I, well, we thought we would go and watch season one of The Tomorrow People because it, it, I figured it would be quite hard to talk about these releases without having some basic knowledge of the show. Well, I'd, I'd only ever seen a bit of the 90s version, which I know that you like. Oh, Christian Smith, yeah. Oh, but I've never sorry. seen any of this 70s version. And this Big Finish series is set after the 1970s version. It's not a reboot. Yes. So so there's like, it's, I think there's about eight or nine series of that series. Yeah, and so it's, it's still using some of the original actors, like Doctor Who. Yeah. It's, it's tapping into that original cast and concepts, uh, but the idea is that it's slightly updated, so it is set after the 70s. So I guess this is sort of set in the early 80s, although well, I, got, I got a heavy 70s vibe from these stories. But no, actually, there is a clue a bit later on, which I will tell you about, oh, which does date it wait, quite a lot. Um, well, before, though, before we even start talking about these audio adventures, mm. Mark, how did you find the televised Tomorrow People? The televised Tomorrow People. Oh, well, I Be couldn't honest, believe... you're very polite. I mean, I know people knock Doctor Who production in the 70s and stuff, but <laughs> I didn't think there was anything shitter. And this is... I mean, it's terrible. <laughs> but it is... <laughs> unlike Doctor Who in the 70s, is, this was shown on, like, children's television, yeah, with yeah. a children's television budget. So it's not like a Blake 7 or a Doctor Who where you look back and you're like, oh, that's a bit ropey. This is complete shitty... Shit. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. Shit, shit. I mean, this is terrible. I wasn't expecting. I was expecting your 70s TV. Yeah. I was not expecting it's so bad. I mean, I thought I thought there was some decent production. I think something like the wait, wait, wait. The location work was pretty strong. The set for Tim was pretty good. Um, but it's every time they have to do any kind of special effect. I mean, in the first one, they had this robot, and it was honestly like a massive dustbin with these weird pipe cleaners coming out. Of his no, I wasn't of expecting. His body. And that that sort of act, compared with some of the bird acting just doesn't make for an enjoyable series. I found it really tough to get through. What, Great ideas. Lead? Was it John? Is he the lead? Is yeah, John. John. So and John. Nicholas is the, Young as John. Nicholas Young as John. He's good. And he's like the anchor for the series. Is he in all of the t- yeah, TV series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He and, he, and Big Finish getting back here for this lot as well. And he so is he the is main like character. Of, so the he's, main. he's the person that's been in all of this. All the TV. Right. Sh- and he was literally there from the beginning to the end. I watched a really fascinating documentary about the Tomorrow People. Mm. And he was on there giving quite a candid interview saying, like, he was really proud to be associated with the show, but as it went on, it just got more ropey. The production values got worse. And by the end, he was a bit embarrassed to be in it. Oh, really? But it was paid work. So he did it. So he's the Sophie Eldred of the Tomorrow People, is he? He did. Just, <laughs> he does it all. Yeah. <laughs> Any old bit of scraps, he'll be there. No, no, no. But I do think he's a good actor. 
and he's the best thing so in it. That's why definitely. he anchors the show because he can actually make this fantastical premise actually seem plausible. Whereas you've got some of these kiddie winks in there on that, kid, that Kenny. Uh, well, child it was, actors. It yeah. was so terrible. They kept shunting him off to the sidelines and uh, well, jaunting him off. <laughs> well, would you care to just explain a few of the premise of the show? Okay, so what I have gathered by watching this and listening to these is very gay. It's, Hang on, a second. it's very. It's the gayest. Wait, no, it's Do you know not. what? Later, as you go on, there's a whole story about um, little ki- twinks, twink boys. Oh, no way, it's true. Little twink boys being sold in the galactic slave trade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being serious. Anyway, so the Tomorrow People, if you're not familiar with it, um, are a race. They are humans, but they are They're Homo have, superior. They have evolved these special powers, and the idea is that they are the future of the human race. So the idea is that the human race will eventually all evolve into these people but because the these are like the the first batch of the of these people with these special powers they are they call themselves the tomorrow people so it started off with john who found himself with these powers and it's like uh telepathic abilities and they can literally just like teleport themselves from one place to another they have a special belt for that don't they Oh, do they? Yeah, like a jaunting belt. Well, it's called jaunting, where they can teleport yeah, right. from places to places. So it's mainly telepathy, isn't it? Yeah, they can hear each other's um, thoughts. And... Well, they can zap themselves into hyperspace as well. Well, I thought that was jaunting with a belt. Oh, is, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, they've got these special powers that nobody has. So they are obviously a bit of a danger, maybe, to other places, uh, and they don't want to be found out. And when somebody sort of breaks out, it's sort of in your teenage years this sort of happens. Like being gay. Yeah. Um, and they can sort of sense other tomorrow people. So that's like a you bit like the very that first. That is like you can sense other gays. A bit, I'm telling yeah. you, there's definitely some subtext here. <laughs> so like in the very first episode, there's a teenager and he collapses and they're like, oh, we can feel that there's someone breaking out. There's a new tomorrow person breaking out. We've got to bring him in to the fold. And they've got this base underneath an old train station, which John has made. And they have and to keep their have... secret, don't they? Because they, they're scared that the government are going to find out. Yeah, I sort of just said So that. that's just like being yeah. gay in the 70s. Yeah. And uh, Tim is their computer. So if you think of a bit like Zen from Blake Seven, it's in a way, like that, yeah. chats to them. He's very charming, everything. though. Do you think? I think that's a great performance. Who plays Tim? Yeah. Uh, Philip Gilbert. He's very charming, I think. And he's, he's got a bit of humour about him, like K-9. And, but as the series goes on, so I only watched the beginning of the TV series, mm. so it's like, oh, there's a new Tomorrow person, oh, there's an alien threat, we've got to stop with our powers. This whole Galactic Federation thing, it gets a that, bit more spacey as it goes on. That's in the TV series. In the TV series. <clears throat> and it gets exposed to the government in the TV series. They right. lean into all of that. Right. Um, but I say, because I have got a confession to make to you now. Mm. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. I had, a, uh, <laughs> I had an epiphany yep. whilst watching The Tomorrow People. You're gay. Uh, oh, I am. <laughs> Alright, was that what you were going to say? I'm breaking out as we speak. <laughs> it's fine, I knew oh, that because I could read your mind. <laughs> There's a no, no. <laughs> oh my out. god. Um, anyway, no, no, my epiphany is this. I rather like this. I don't like the production values. I do think it is an, a bit of old tat uh, in how it's produced. But I really like the premise and I think... For a child in the 70s to watch a TV show where any child could be this special tomorrow person breaking out of these special powers, you know, and have to go on these secret missions and things and save the planet. I think that's a really great premise. And what I like about the audios is it takes all of the great ideas and some of the terrible ones as well, the Saucons, <laughs> all these great ideas and then it gives them decent production value. So these are really well-made audios. Mm-hmm. I thought the direction was really fantastic. The performance was really great. We've got our fabulous Helen Goldwyn in there somewhere. Um, so it takes all the best of the show and jettisons all the worst. And I just, I think the idea is enticing. And it does, like, we've got four stories here and they're four very diverse stories. So it just goes to show the premise has got legs. Oh, it's a great idea, yes. And I definitely think the audios are a perfect place for them, maybe rather than television. Shall I just talk about this first series that we're going to be discussing today? You better add, we're ten minutes into this already. So we have four stories in this this first batch, and they are... The New Gods. 
Oh, I don't have any quotes, I'm afraid. Oh, no quotes this time. Okay. No. The Deadliest Species by Gary Russell. The Ghosts of Mendez by Austin Atkinson. And the sign of Diolix. I think it's Diolix. Oh, okay. Diolix. By, by your favourites, okay. Mike Tucker and Robert Perry. So these are these are four stories in this first series by Big Finish. That's right. Um, well, should we go into the first one then? Uh, we should. Yes, yeah, we should. Yeah. Um, oh, I just want to add another small caveat about the TV series. And I promise I'll stop going on okay. about it. Okay. Well, two things, really. One is I, I was asked, I kind of put feelers out because the production value was so terrible. I was like, can someone please recommend me a Tomorrow People episode, which actually looks really good and actually has a bit of worth about it. And my very good friend, Cy Hart, recommended uh, one called... Oh, good God, I can't remember now. Anyway, it's set in Series 7, and it was about a Russian woman who'd broken out. Oh, I saw a bit of that one, yeah. Yeah, and she was down, like, back alleys, and that she was being chased by the KGB. They wanted her back, doing experiments on her, and the Tomorrow People are trying to get her to the secret base so they can protect her. But she's down all these back alleys. Oi. Um, anyway, there was all this stuff about... They thought she was a prostitute. They thought she was shooting up heroin. I mean, it was, it was quite adult for a children's show. I, and I'm yeah. wondering, and I think that the weird thing about the Tomorrow People is it does go from quite occasionally sort of mature premises to absolute children's hour, you know, and it's a weird juxtaposition. And I actually think you get a bit of that in these audios as well. Anyway, well, but I just want to say, there, so there are some... Tomorrow People TV episodes that are probably worth seeking out. The absolute worst one was the Western in Space featuring Peter Davison and Sandra Dickinson as um, space cowboys. And I'm not kidding you, they all had like text and draws like, <laughs> Mama, what's going on? Uh, we're going to go down to planet Earth. <laughs> and, oh, he was, Peter Davison was naked. He was only wearing gold underpants. Oh, God. I mean, it's a highlight of his career. He did that after he was the pig in Hitchhiker's Guide <laughs> to the Galaxy. <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to the audio. Let's go into the first release. Yes, so, we start off with The New Gods, Ooh. released in April 2001, written by Gareth Roberts and Rebecca Levine. This stars Nicholas Young as John. Helen Goldwyn as Eleanor yes. uh, and Philip Gilbert as Tim, also featuring Daniel Wilson, Louise Rolfe and Matthew Ashford. Yes. Uh, directed by Nicholas Pegg with music by Russell Stone. And I didn't realise that these were in episodes, a bit like Doctor Who. Yeah, they're like on 20 minutes. Aren't about they? 20 minutes. So this is a two episodes. Uh, so it's only about 40 minutes in... In length. It absolutely shot by this first yeah, one, I thought. Absolutely. And I think this is a great introduction. I don't think you need to have watched a TV series to listen to these. No, not at all. And no, and because it does introduce all the core premises. Because at the beginning of this, a new tomorrow, in the very first scene, uh, what's the fella's name? So Paul. It's a new tomorrow person. <clears throat> He's breaking out, isn't it? He's he? breaking out. It's very much like that first episode of the TV series, and it introduces all your characters. So we don't have. So we have obviously Nicholas Young as John, as yeah. we've said. He's he's in it as well, and there the guy goes. playing Tim is in it again. But we have a new character played by Helen Goldwyn here, yeah. Eleanor, who is basically uh, like what's her name? Carol. In the first, who is Carol from the first series? Can I just say, if knows. you are going to seek out Eddie tomorrow, you go watch the first season one because you've got uh, Carol there, Kimmy Schmidt or whatever it is. <laughs> and the actress is channeling her inner Katie Manning and every single line she says is like, oh, how are we going to get out of this? Yeah. You know. And, and Helen Goldwyn as Eleanor does a very good version but of that. But she's calm. tones it down. She is way And we love Helen Goldwyn. She's been in lots of Doctor Who. Oh, I thought Big she was finishes. super engaging she's in brilliant this. brilliant. She had a lot of good humour. There was a few lines where she's going, oh, you men, you know. <laughs> so you've got that set up. So you're introduced to a new Tomorrow person and then they introduce him they're like oh well we're the tomorrow people we do this and we're this yeah. of the galactic federation and all of this stuff which so is you fair get enough it all. For, yeah. for the first which one. is brilliant and the storyline in this one is um that you've got this like zane and katia who are these like pop star people and it, it does feel oh, very 70s you know it's super glam rock this like, yeah and they're and they're channeling there's an alien influence there so 
um, they're basically getting people to worship them like the cult of like the celebrity. Yeah, which so is that's what I figured idea. was like the new gods. I thought it was them. And that's, the new gods, is, yeah, that's what well, that's but, the but idea. But it wasn't, is. was it? But then there's an alien thing behind it that as wanted well. everyone to worship them. Yeah, and it wasn't. It wasn't Zane and Catcher at all. I'm sorry, guys. I am going to reveal the twist because yeah. it was absolutely well, amazing. It was their baby. And it was their baby. baby. So and the baby was going, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> it was so fun. In fact, can you play the tr- clip, please, right now, where the baby turns into the monster? <laughs> Thank you very much. Don't worry, Camberwell. I won't let them hurt you. John, on the head. The lips are moving. Creatures. <laughs> you presume to set your primitive minds against mine. Not so primitive that we can't send you right back where you came from. You worship me before, you will worship me again. There's some nice other little bits where they're explaining to... Oh, I keep wanting to call him Daniel, but that's the actor. It's Paul is the new guy, where they're explaining about the telepathic abilities and Eleanor says, oh, can you can, um, focus your mind? Imagining uh, a flower opening or a fist unclenching, which is what the oh, I TV series... Sort of thing all the time. Which is the TV series... Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Iconography, which is a clever idea. We, we I didn't like actually, that. we haven't mentioned the uh, music the theme tune. Oh my god, this theme it's tune is so catchy. We've been singing this for weeks. It's a brilliant theme it's, tune. I think it's the best. I think it's better than the Blake Seven theme tune for Dougie mm. Simpson. It's yeah. fantastic. And you've also got in your guest role, so Louise Rolf. Very recognisable. She's catchier in this. She's Edith in The Doctor Who, The Chimes of Midnight. Are you dead, my puppet? Or are you alive? Do you recognise her voice in this? I did straight away. Am I dead? Or am I alive? <laughs> yeah. You must know. That, yeah. You must decide. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's, it's a bit like The Doctor Who's where it's quite a small cast. I did feel... Actually, I thought these were going to be very low budget. What the and very audio? Yeah, very no, small. No, no. And what? actually, they do sound this, this on is... par with all the other big Finnish stuff. I oh, thought this, this would is be... as good as the best Doctor Who's. I thought in terms of mm. production value. Yeah, I mean, Russell Stone is. Uh, I know I go on about the music. Well, I thought they'd be a bit more like the single Benice releases. You know that sort of. Budget, oh, but they are a bit higher than no, that. No, no, you've got bigger casts. I think. Yeah, but I think this is a passion project of Gary Russell's. Right. He's said to me on my podcast that he's a massive fan of the Tomorrow people obviously he writes the second one mm. i think he directs some of them doesn't he oh it's nicholas Pegg who directed this one uh-huh. um but i think i think he's basically said to jackson hey Hillary, we're doing the tomorrow people and we're gonna throw a bit of money at it i think it's the perfect series to go to leap onto to try and do um can i ask you a question please yeah of course. what is the galactic trig i have no idea because th- they say that tim was created by the galactic trig i thought john built Tim as a computer. No. Oh. Well, if anyone knows what the galactic trig is, would you mind writing in, please? Because I, I was a bit. I wrote that in my notes. I was, what the hell is the that? The only thing is, I mean, in the TV series, we said like the acting is not amazing. It's very childlike in terms of character development or anything. Okay, you're not going to get anything amazing in the seventies. I was wondering if Big Finish would do like they've done for other series and develop characters a little bit more. But this Paul, who's like suddenly breaking out, oh, I'm a Tomorrow person, and they're like, yeah, we work for the Galactic Federation, we do this, yeah. we do this, we defend the Earth. And he he's goes, like, oh, wicked. Yeah, great. Yeah. And he's yeah. right in there as if he's always been there. I was a little bit disappointed that you didn't get there a bit more of that much. development. This, I think this first series is more about just what stories can we tell. And I'm yeah. hoping in the second series they'll do a bit more. There wasn't work. M- really much of that, so that was a little bit disappointing. Think, can I say, I thought the, um, the breakout effect, all that sort of trippy... You know, you're breaking out. No, but all the sound effects and all that, mm. it was hip- It was really good. Mm. Like uh, For me, that, that felt more like a, a sort of a transformative thing occurring than anything they showed us in the TV series. Maybe because it was in my ears, you know. Honestly, I felt as if I was breaking out myself. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the little um, Big Finish reference in this? What, what news? Lanyon Moore. Lanyon Moore, yeah! yeah! Lanyon Moore will be shut until further notice. Oh, no. That was nice. Did you notice that they ended this on a dreadful joke, just like they did in the TV oh. series, where he goes, Kit, Zane and Catcher, it could only have been the work of an evil entity. Ah! <laughs> now, this is where you get... So it does sound right. And if 
your listening to this, you can very much imagine they all look very 70s. It's all, like you say, glam rock 70s. Yeah. But they mention, they do date it because this whole cult of celebrity thing, there's the Zane and Katia poster they put up in the room and it like has telepathic abilities. And a, a very much a trope, I think, of the Tomorrow People is that somebody will come in and take over Tim or shut him down or someone's mind yeah, control. John gets taken over, suddenly he's bad. Someone's always getting taken over and being bad out of the main cast in this. Well, But what happens is there's that poster and then there's a joke at the end where they put up... He puts up a Westlife poster. No, he doesn't. And they talk about Westlife. So this is 90s. And so Westlife came around in 1999. So, yeah, this is... This is 2000. Dated. Didn't you get all the Westlife stuff at the no. end? No. So this is not end of the 90s, 2000 is actually well, set. bugger me. So this is our modern day tomorrow, and people. Just before, on, and just not, before Kish, Christian Schmidt came along. No, well, and also after. That's after that. So it's after the nineties tomorrow, that's people. But they do say they do explain. I think it's in the next one where he says there's a whole other group of when John was away that broke up, which I think they're referencing the nineties set. I bet you they'll they? do flashback stories to those. They're, they're referencing that, so we are very much. Oh, is he talking uh, about? I think he's talking about from the nineties because he says, "Oh, there's another group that did this." It's mentioned, and also they mentioned about having a PlayStation and stuff. So it is very much set oh, in the nineties, two thousands. Thought it was set in the eighties. No, but you can very much imagine. It, can it, I... It's very, yeah. It could be the seventies, the way that they talk and the way that they act. Can and I the just that um, have a very quick um, side note to okay. say about the nineties tomorrow, people? Because mm. I watched that in the nineties, mm. and for me. That was my Doctor Who replacement in the nineties. Like it was the production; it was all done on film. Mm. It had some pretty, it had some reasonable actors in it, and great guest actors. You had Jean Marsh as this insect-loving mad woman. <laughs> yeah. uh, Christopher Benjamin's in it. Christopher Lee is in one. Um, and there, there was the very last one was called The Living Stones, which I watched recently, didn't I? And it still holds up. It's about alien seed pods that come to Earth and suck the faces off people and turn them evil, and it was. You know, quite violent, quite dramatic. At the time, for me, it was peak television. Like, I absolutely loved it. And I kind of wish Big Finish would do what well, they can't is. now. And well, we... let's just talk about... So these um, releases, I think Big Finish did about six series of this. Unfortunately, the licence was taken away from them. How I does think... this work? Can you please explain to me how this works? Well, it's it's the same as the Doctor Who, the BBC. So, so if they say if they take the their BBC license, uh, BBC take Doctor Who license off Big Finish, their entire back catalogue cannot be re- sold. Well, I don't, it depends what the terms are, but I, for this, for the Tomorrow People, that was part of it. I mean, they never got, they didn't have downloads in these days. Where it was quite early on, so they were. What so, was the reason? Was it because well, of the American... Because they were making the American one, I think. Yeah. They just didn't renew the license, and so the people that own the rights to the Tomorrow People and all of that just said to Big Finish. You can't do any more. That's it. You're done. And so they can't sell them. So these are very difficult to get hold of. I think there's a whole set on eBay for like yeah, 200 so quid. I see them on the shelf. They're you know. very rare. And I was lucky enough to find this series on CD uh, on eBay. So have a look. Google. I'm sure they're out there somewhere on the internet if you do want to listen to them. It's a shame that Big Finish can't sell them. I don't know if they could ever do the downloads, but... Because, like, these because of the rides, are good as well. And I don't think that... I mean, it's not worth it for that American series. It, what, did one series and was axed? If it's for the sake of that, all these big Finnish stories are far superior. But anyone who's thinking, like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't want to go to our effort just to find these Tomorrow People it's CDs. It's a shame, because These really are is. genuinely entertaining. And I really like this first one, The New Gods. It's a great introduction, even if you haven't watched the show. Well, I did have one, one, one bad, and that was, I thought, oh, the whole evil John bit in the second episode. Well, that, that's play- what happens in yeah, Tomorrow People. He is playing the part, like, you know, yes... I've been out for a while, but I'm back now. <laughs> and I'm like, but he really? Oh, well, he's. Oh, excuse me, if you come home he... one day and said, I'm going to make the dinner, I'll be like, Are you all right tonight? Like, what's going on? Are you an evil doppelganger? It's the same as Sophie Eldred in the Genocide Machine, isn't it, really? You have to do that acting, that don't worse. you? I'm sorry. I mean, and I don't know what his career's been like, but he might not have done any other acting Actually, since. So it's great you know. that he's, they've got them back. Aren't you surprised Sophie Eldred didn't turn up in one of these? <laughs> she turns up we in We haven't every... heard them all yet. We I, don't listened, know yet. I listened to a Vienna the other day that she was in. She's in every fucking <laughs> series, I'll tell you what. Bernice Summerfield as an evil villain. But I think um, Helen Goldwyn makes it for me. She's brilliant in this. She's the heart standout. And it's a great... Overall, it's a great introductory story it's quick it's and pacey it's very quick. i was so surprised i was thinking it'd be like a whole hour i but... thought it was brilliantly executed Do you know um the only other story that we've done so far that was directed by nicholas pegg 
spoke to Orlando Moore. Yeah, he's a good yes. director. Yeah. In fact, he doesn't direct enough stories, I don't think. <clears throat> but no, this is a very confident, very pacey, very fun beginning. Yeah, really, really good. Very, I, I was okay. surprisingly impressed. Yeah, me too. Well, let's go on to the next one then, shall we? Oh. Here we go. So, number two, The Deadliest Species. This was released in September 2001, written by Gary Russell, bringing back our regulars, Nicholas Young, Helen Goldwyn, Philip Gilbert and Daniel Wilson now as Paul, also featuring Peter Van Clark as Stephen, from the TV from series, the TV series, Lisa Bowerman oh. and Roy Skelton. <laughs> He's brilliant. <laughs> this was also directed by Gary Russell, with music by Russell Stone. Can I say right? Can I take the lead with this one? This is the Tomorrow People episode that Gary Russell has been waiting to write ever since it was taken off the series. Now look, I yeah, you can make a joke that Gary Russell likes a bit of continuity in his life. I, I have read Divided Loyalties where the Celestial Toymaker, you know, meets Adric and Tegan and Nyssa and it features the 90210 sequence on Gallifrey featuring the Doctor, the Rani, Barusa and everybody. I mean, he loves throwing it all in there, doesn't he? He likes putting all the continuity in the cake tin and seeing what whooshes up. Well, what he does here with the deadliest species is somehow manages to... Because there is a roll call of regulars in the Tomorrow People. Well, you see, this is the thing because... Being new to the Tomorrow People, okay, I'm glad I watched those first few episodes. I haven't watched a lot. But this, so this brings back one of the characters from the very first Steven. episode, Stephen, yeah. and references so many other characters. Sutai? And all these uh, other people from the TV series, Elizabeth. which I have no idea who they are. So I felt it a little bit frustrating. Yeah, but that's... That there was so much stuff. You can still follow yeah, can it. Can I personally say just, that that is just that like, your well, problem that you haven't watched the TV series? You're... Yeah, but Listen I shouldn't to have to have watched the TV series to buy this big finished CD. Well, no, the first one introduced it, the second one's leaning in. I think that's fair I enough. Yeah, I know, but I think it just went a bit too far. But it's great that... But what he does he, is... But because I had seen Stephen in the TV series, yeah, there was a bit more of an impact for me because I knew who he was. What Gary Russell does here is he wants to tie oh in God. every single regular into one story. So he wants us to catch up with every single person that was ever introduced in the TV I series. I suppose, though, because this is set after... It's not like with the Doctor Who's where we're trying to slot in stories in between TV episodes. Yeah. It's very clear that this is way later, like we've said in the 90s, because he kills off half the bloody cast. Well, that's the thing. He kills off <laughs> all of these regulars that were in... So what he if, kills what off... What's the name? Wants to come back and do a big finish one day. Sorry. He kills off Ken, <laughs> Kenny and Sue Tai, and yeah. apparently those were the two worst actors in the, in the original role. <laughs> well, they're not coming back now. <laughs> and then he obviously turns Stephen evil. Stephen has been turned to the evil source and em empire, and is going around murdering people. So after our first episode where we're set on Earth and we've set everything up, we're going way out into space and we're very much alien invasion and the Sorsons, right. which is such a B-movie style name no. of alien, yeah, the Sorsons. No, no, they're in the... Have you not Are seen they? what they look like? No, I've not they're, seen them. Oh, Google it. Everyone Google the Sorsons oh, right now. I didn't realise. So they're from the TV show. No, they're terrible. Honestly, oh. they're the worst design monsters of all time. And Roy Skelton did the voices. Well, and it's Roy Skelton playing all of the Sorsons in this. And they also so did sound like that they are very much what are we going to do command they, they sound like that Sontaran from Shakedown they sound very much like that but he's having a conversation with himself as being a whole source on fleet <laughs> it's very funny um, it took me a little while to get into it I did enjoy it though but it what it was so the, all those I think continuity the, the, the idea of this one is is like someone is assassinating the Tamora people and then the shock twist is that it is Stephen, one of the original regulars. But Who, you know what he's, he's doing? Brainwash. Can I give you a bit of behind the scenes gossip? I don't know much okay. gossip in this one, mm. but so in the documentary that I watched about the Tomorrow People, the actor who played Stephen was summarily executed. I.e., he was given his marching orders. Like one day he came into work and said, "Right, we're writing you out. We're bringing in some new hot tomorrow person." Because Roger Price, who by all accounts was a bit weird, like he liked. The boys, if you know Roger what I mean. Price. He's the guy who created the series. Oh. They used to have their auditions and he'd be hiding behind the door looking through the crack in the door. That's what he says in the documentary. Oh, God. And and, and, and basically when they left, he'd sort of pop his head out the door and sort of like nod his head if he liked the boy that was coming oh, from the no. audition. Anyway, so they brought in this new hot sort of tomorrow person and they wrote out the Stephen character and he basically was just told, I'm sorry, you're dumb. Like... 
And so he was really pissed off. And you watch him in that documentary, he's really sad about how he was treated. And sort of his career went down the pan. But that's what Gary Russell does with Stephen's character in this, isn't it? He says, oh, you just ditched me. You sent me off to the Galactic Federation. I'm really pissed off. And he's gone round then murdering the other Tamara people. Because um, John being, he's like supposed to be like the the teacher, the father figure for all the other Tamara people and stuff he? who is right through it. So it does explore that relationship yeah. between John and his sort of, um, his brood of children. <laughs> but I didn't know that behind the scenes. Well, it's good that he came back and did this big finish. Well, I mean, like I'm, su- I'm surprised. You know? Well, I wouldn't say it redeemed the character. It well, assassinated it the character did, a bit. No, but he went off. He didn't, he wasn't, he was brainwashed by the Sawsons and then he went off for recuperation. So maybe he'll turn up again. We don't know yet. Oh, that's true. That's so true. He, he could come back. I um, I actually wrote down a quote here where he goes, I was ignored, dropped, no longer one of the gang. In came Mike and out went Tyso and I. He says that and that's exactly what happened in the TV series. So Gary Russell knows, knows his, his behind stuff. the scenes stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I suppose for the fans of the Tomorrow People, they would pick up on that as well. This is definitely a fan I can't believe Story. though he turned out to be, you know, an assassin for these comedy aliens. And honestly, to kill Lisa Bauman is unthinkable. Lisa Bauman is great in this. Well, as this, um, what is she? Sort of like a refugee. She's a Sarsen refugee. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's trying to find the small people. So she comes down on Earth, and I like that because she doesn't know about. It. So she's like, oh, I'm on a. She's on the train and meets the conductor. And she's like, money ticket. I don't know what's going on. Oh, of but she's great in this, and I don't think of a Benice. No, 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 else. no. I, she was she was playing that sort of victim role, wasn't she? Yeah. So uh, she's really good, and it's a, uh, obviously it's a familiar voice. It was a great cliffhanger, though. But she, she she first arrived at the base, yes. and then Stephen arrived, and he's like, he's the traitor. you're dead. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, man, that was great. And I think that big finish are doing that thing where they're like, okay, it's a little bit of a budget, so who else have we got in? Lisa Bauman's doing Benice next door, or let's get her in to do a part, probably. You know, but it's great. It doesn't matter that they're recognisable voices. I mean, oh, it's difficult. I don't necessarily imagine the character. I imagine Lisa Bauman with her earphones in the booth again. But still, oh, I like, it's a great well, performance. I imagine Roy Skelton as one of the Krals. I just imagine the Kral <laughs> as well. Yeah, that's all I can think of is a Kral. But you know, I've got to say, there was a wonderful moment in this where Gary Russell makes a comment on how simpler things were in the 70s. And I've got a quote, if mm. you don't mind. He, One of the characters says, this planet has gotten uglier, but what we stand for is still important. And he basically says that back in the 70s, it was a more innocent time. But since then, things have become politically, you know, a bit, a bit nastier. It was making some good commentary. In fact, I wrote down here at the end, sort of the whole revelation about Stephen what is kind of like a heavy plot series, it does become a bit of a character tale. It's a criticism mm. of John because he's kind of arrogant and in charge, but it's also a criticism of Stephen because he's impetuous and egotistical. And the two of them have a couple of scenes where they go off together and they try and sort of mend their differences. And I thought, in terms of character, this was probably the strongest story. Definitely for character. And there's a, there's a lot of little digs at John throughout all of these with Eleanor's always like oh you can't you're not telling us everything Eleanor's a bit of the, still a bit whiny in all of this uh, but a bit like oh, they would always do what he says and they respect him but they're always like he's the parent to them he's always the, yeah, isn't he yeah, and he yeah. gets that flack from the characters and that is a bit of a line throughout all of this uh, a bit more so than I noticed that he was doing in the TV series go in that first episode in the TV series what's her name what's her name Carolyn Carol Ooh, Carol, yeah. Carol. Kimmy Schmidt. She joined it right into his bedroom when he was in bed. Do you know what? Oh, he yeah. in bed. Yeah, this chest Can't believe it. it. I think he was only in his underpants. Yeah, and she just joined it into his bedroom. I can't believe that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was I'm a bit sorry. dodgy. I told you. <laughs> Maybe they're all bisexual. It's, it's, it's the Torchwood of the 70s. It is a bit, yeah. Can I just say, though, because I, I, I did think this was the strongest of the four... Really? Uh, what? Well, because I thought it introduced a lot of more of the backstory. It, it's three episodes. It, it brought a bit in longer. the Federation delegate who got to talk about sort of what's happened between the Tomorrow People and the Federation, He's, which I thought yeah, was quite but interesting. He sounded a bit like Tim to me. I got them a bit mixed up. I, I got a little bit confused 
with when they were talking. Well, no, it, it, and... this is what is this is what you learn in this. Are you ready? Okay. That uh, Earth is a member of the Galactic Federation. Yep. The Sarsen... Sarsen? Sarsen. Sarsen. Right, that's a Sarsen, isn't it? Sarsen. Sarsen. Isn't Sarsen brown sauce? Oh, yeah, I think so. The Sarsen menace is taking over the galaxy and worlds are falling to their great war machine. Every time you say Federation, though, I think of Blake 7. I think of Star Trek. (laughs) But, you know, I will say there was a few downsides to this. Right. It's a Gary Russell script, and so there (laughs) there there are lines in there like... We're not pacifists simply by moral choice and things like that. Like some of this dialogue. Oh, I don't no. mind that. It's all oh, right. Well, you know me. I like crafted dialogue. And, mm. you know, he doesn't really craft his dialogue. But anyway, um, what I wrote here is this is all so shocking and surprising, you know, that Stephen's the assassin and blah, mm. blah, blah. But actually, it's easy to forget that all of that is told through exposition and word yeah, peril. Because you don't all these people are killed off screen, aren't they? They're you don't like, experience any of it. I've just had a phone call. Danny, um, Danny, yeah. <laughs> Kenny, but Kenny's what dead. Are the, what are the cliffhangers? He's literally. Um, Kenny was at a Federation cl- a conference climax. Fed- <laughs> Kenny be. was at a Federation <laughs> conference where he was killed. Da, 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 da. I was like, oh, I'm going to jaunt over to New York where Carol is, or whatever <laughs> you know. W- is Carol all right? Did we find out? About no, Carol? she's okay. I think. Oh, that's all right then. I think she. Who was the other one? Ling Tai. No. No. <laughs> Sue Tai! <laughs> Link Tai is from Battlefield. <laughs> For goodness yeah. sakes, you've got a problem, you have. Um, and also, I think the worst thing about this was that the ending was staggeringly anticlimactic. <laughs> because it, basically, Lisa Bowman's character is just there so Paul can take the knowledge from her head. Yes, but and at that the comes end, back later he on. beams onto the source and ship and goes, oh, I've got all your weapons knowledge in my head. Now, you lot better fuck off. But yeah, this and is then the it thing. just ended. But, so there were never any kind of a threat no. at all. But, but that comes a bit later on. So he's got that knowledge. They do mention that in the next story. But also, I thought, Paul, again, he's a new tomorrow. He was very... Very confident. Confident yeah. all of a sudden, like he's been doing this for ages. And he still, he still mentions a bit throughout this that he's new. So I don't think there's a big passage of time. But yeah, I thought that was a bit like... I don't think he should have done that because he's so new. How does he know what he's doing? This is that the first time in space, or uh, with Aiden? I don't know. I, I was waiting for him. There might I have been a lot of adventures him. between the first one and well, this one. I don't one. think you so because he says he's still quite new. So, uh, well, yeah. all I wrote at the end of this was it baffles me that something this appallingly written can be so enjoyable. It was great. I, I did. I enjoyed it. I, I did thought enjoy this was it. really, really yeah, fun. And fun. actually, I'm going to make a pun. Apart from one Dorian Gray episode that he wrote. I think this is the strongest Gary Russell Big Finish script. Well, I think he loves Tomorrow People. Yeah, so and, and it beams from yeah. every single word. Yeah. So, yeah, no, really, Good really... Uh, the, so, I'd say the first one was fun. The second one is essential. Mm. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what the next <clears throat> one brings us. <laughs> Look at the title of it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds oh. terrible, doesn't it? So, the next story, The Ghosts of Mendez, written by Austin Atkinson. Do you know what else he wrote? What? Necromantia. Mm. Also featuring Sarah McGuinness, Jeremy James and Maggie Stables. Oh, yes. Yeah. Directed by <coughs> Jason Hay Gallery, the big cheese, uh, with music <laughs> by Russell Stone. The big cheese? <laughs> well, he is the big cheese, isn't he? Do you know what? I think... I think <laughs> I'd be scared if he was directing me. He directs odd ones, you know. Have you ever noticed? He only directs the odd one. He directed Masters of War for Unbound. He directed The Rapture. Which probably explains a lot. Is he like, because he's in charge, if someone else can't do it or whatever, he's got to do it? (laughs) No, no, I think every now and again he just wants to direct one. And actually, I do think he gets better, but some of his early ones are really terrible. Anyway, this wasn't so terrible, though. Uh, So this one, again, three episodes. We're Um, back on Earth with a a sci-fi concept. Yeah, so Mm, there's a a little bit... This is more complicated. gallery opening up. And it turns out the art gallery is an entity that can like suck absorb your... people into it. Because mm. John is going on a date at the beginning of this. Well, so that was quite nice. Was she a tomorrow John... person? 
No, but I think But they could I telepathically t- talk to each other. She knew. No, no, I don't think so. She knew all about them and stuff. And oh. I felt like they'd known each other before. I don't know if that's in the TV series. She's been in the TV series. Okay. But she felt like an oh old God. friend. Do you think that was his people. seduction technique? By the way, I'm homo superior. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've broken out. And I could... Oh, no. <laughs> Stop it. You're getting... broken out. I'm going to jaunt inside you. No. Oh, God, no. Please. You've got to cue that bit in. <laughs> but no, that's nice. So he's on a date. So you've got that side of something else that's happening with that character. I yeah. got a little bit confused because then she gets sucked in, doesn't yeah. she, into the building. She becomes part of the gestalt and entity. There's a bit of an alien connection with this. But we also have... Um, oh, terrible. Okay, the terrible bit where it opens up with those construction workers. Oh, yeah, that was Played awful. by Jeremy James and Friend. Yeah. But then Jeremy James... Like, isn't Jeremy James the reporter as well? Maybe later. Maybe he's doubling up. Yeah. I sure have a look in the CD. But I don't like that. It's all a very terrible dialogue. It was Gary. Oh, oh, I can't wait. There's a fit bird. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to ask her. When I finish my construction work, I'm going to go out and ask her out. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's oh, your standard no. opening scene exposition, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I didn't really, really like that. So it didn't come start very well for Can me. Can I say something I loved about this, though? I liked the fact that there was a brand new threat to the Tomorrow People, and that was press exposure. That somebody could yes. actually actually expose them, so they had to kind of make nice. Of him. But instead, they didn't make nice of him. They threatened him. They were like, we, "We're going to do terrible things to you if you." Do. And that's John doing that. John and Paul. Yeah. Well, is that because we're in more? The world has changed. It's more of a modern world. And there's this whole... With the architecture stuff, I was trying to imagine it. I couldn't really get it. Where they were like, this woman has, has done other buildings before and they've collapsed or something because yeah. of this. <laughs> so they're like, oh, it's glowing or something on the news. Uh, and it's like, this art, This wasn't supposed to happen in the original architecture. I found it very difficult to imagine this one. And then Maggie Stables turns up as a, a baddie. Well, she's sort of... She's a, she's a oh, well, weapons-developing scientist. But she wants the she was great, DNA though. of the Tomorrow People to, like, test and stuff yeah, yeah, in yeah, exchange yeah. for information on this building. She was ruthless, not ruefully. Ruthless. Yeah, so she's not doing the silly voice. She is just Maggie Stables, very cold, calm, very well acted. Well, if she would... You'll forgive me if I point a loaded gun at you. So... Yeah, it was it was another element in a story that was top heavy with elements. I felt like it was a bit of a mess that there was so well, many things. The happening. thing is, is you, you've got some really interesting ideas there. You've got John's date. You've got um, oh, and Eleanor getting a bit sort of not jealous, but a bit like she's having a go at John. You've got Maggie Stables, scientist. You've got the art gallery gestalt. You've got the press threat. There was even a talk as well of uh, that the government's getting nervous, that too many people are breaking out, and they're developing, like, contingency plans against Mm. the... Really interesting stuff, but too much for one story. And this is the one where um, Paul loses his arm as well. Yeah, that's strange, Does he get sort of half sucked in, and then Tim has to, like grow him a new arm or clone yeah. it and give him like a bionic arm bionic to begin arm. with. So again, a Paul, it's a but he's all very just getting on with it and yeah. <laughs> there, yeah, there was a lot happening in this one, a bit too much for me. I, I thought it was like from I scene thought. to scene, it was perfectly nice to listen to. Like, I'd, 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 it wasn't boring but I don't think any of it cohered at the end and it was just like throwing a ton of ideas in the air which were all really, like, any one of them, the whole thing about the government, like, being concerned about the Tomorrow People and developing, like, mm, ideas to, to to ensnare them all. That's a great idea for a story. I hope they do that in a future season, because I think that would be really, really interesting. And don't they end up in Antarctica or on a hill or something at the end? Yeah. It's, <laughs> like, it's all just very odd. This was the weakest of the four. Yeah, for me too, as I well. Thought, Although, I, I love hearing Maggie Stable, oh, so yeah. anything with her in is, yeah. is already going to be great. Well, you're going to love it, the next episode of Finish Big, then. I liked Eleanor shouting at John a lot. But I, I will say, if this is the weakest of the four... Still not bad. I still found this listenable. And, I, you know, the weaker ones we've done of our other episodes so far, some of them have been interminable. Oh, yeah, this you know, isn't like as bad as some of them. Sirens of Time. No, 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 like it's that. not like that. This, this is still was, listenable. This was fun enough, yeah. Maybe this could have been a two episodes with a few elements taken out, a little bit more of a concise Maybe. thing. Um, well, what about uh, Diolix? Are we going on to the next one already? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, to say I'll, about the Ghosts of Mandos. <laughs> I will just say this: Austin Atkinson, I believe, only wrote this and Necromantia, so I wouldn't say he's the most prestigious big finish writer out there. 
No, probably not. <laughs> He did not break out. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped it off somewhere else. <laughs> well, listen, you can use these terms for anything, can't you? <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's go on to the last one then. Uh, the Sign of Daolix. You love this, didn't you? Written by Mike Tucker and Robert Perry. Uh, what did they previously write? Uh, well, Mike Tucker did Doctor Who, The Genocide Machine, That's but right. Mike Tucker and Robert Perry are a duo that do a lot of the BBC Doctor Who books, don't yeah, they? Like well, Illegal mi- Alien. Mixed and bunch of books, but actually quite fun. Along with our, our usual trio, this features Gareth Thomas, Claire Buckfield, Louise Faulkner, and Toby Longworth. Now, actually, say about... Toby all... Longworth is? Yeah. That's Beat the Meep. He's in Spectral Anymore as well. But actually, How does that song go? All the guests. La, 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 no, we're not starting that now. La, la, we're not starting la, 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 that now. La, la, la. And nibble off your teeth till you're long and thin. <laughs> na, na, na. Come on. Deep right. fry him in some fat. You are beef's <laughs> friend. Kill them all. But the guest cast, actually, <laughs> in all of these, I know they're some of the regulars that we've had before. Oh, but they're, they're, they're good are actors. Great. Fuck that. They're good actors. They That's all you need. Brilliant. Yeah. It's like the Bernese friend. You get the Doctor but actors not, turning up. But, but it's, it's not like the Bernese where it's the cheapy, you know, just one or two people. You know, Gareth Thomas. Yeah. So basically what you've got in this is you've got Claire Buckfield. That's Sally Ann from The One Doctor. And she's in um, He Jests at Scars. The and she's Belliard's in companion. Fabulous in 2.4 Children. Yeah. You've got Gareth Thomas, who's Lord Tamworth. And Blake, obviously. And, of course. Jenna! And who's the Come other Come over here now. Oh, Bev Tarrant's in this. Yes. Louise Faulkner. Louise Is that Faulkner. Sally Faulkner's sister? No, they're not related at all. Sure? I said she was her daughter and it's not. I think I told you that's a that's joke. That's a very... Yeah, that's her name, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I, when I saw it, I thought, Miss Tremaine. I was like, oh no, it's the wrong one. It's, no, it's <laughs> Bev Tarrant. But it's Bev Tarrant. Yeah. Very recognisable. Well, can I can I just say that I thought that the they lent into the, you know, the sleepy English village. Perfect. Churches. Yeah. You know. Sets up a mystery. It's just three episodes again and Stone again, Circles was in it it's yeah. all well, of those Gareth Thomas a bit like because he's in Children of the Stones it's, a, it's yeah. leaning into that a little bit as well yeah. um, and you've got Louise Faulkner playing the vicar Lady Vicar who which... turned out to be <laughs> not evil she was the jailer of the Diolix yeah but you've got that mystery and like every, it does every, who in the village knows what's going on Is are they all in on it is it a culty thing yeah, what's yeah, happening yeah. and you've really got fun. Claire really, really Buckfield fun. playing the, a younger girl who's breaking out I like supposedly. the sound of a total sensory emulsion <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's and Gareth Thomas is playing her father who's very Welsh is Gareth Thomas actually Welsh yes he is yeah. alright because he plays a horrible Welshman. Perfect Welshman in Torchwood, <laughs> doesn't he? In Ghost Machine. Go on, get out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was creepy in that. Shut up, Cuddy. Get over here now. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that your Blake impression? <laughs> oh, my God. He does. I'm beaming down at Jenna Cuddy. Stay here. <laughs> yeah. I'm the, I'm the lead of this show. Oh, fuck. Paul Darrow's taken over. <laughs> Oh, um, dear. Yeah, so that's the, that's the setup. And you're not sure who's bad. And you don't necessarily suspect the vicar. No, I can't think no, of no. John French Vicar of Dibley when it's because it's a female vicar. I don't know why in my head that's There's what she looked like. Female vicar, out there, you I know. know. Um, but yeah, and so then you've got uh, our, our usual trio sort of investigating, trying to find this girl. Mm. But there's some, there's other stuff going on, and the bit where they're like they find the all these like dead bodies of all these vicars. Yeah, it was really creepy. Things, so it's really unfolding. It is leading into bit. sort of the demon style. Yes, of it is. Who, it's that it? time, and yeah. I really like that. And but then, as it goes on, it goes we into go a more science into... fiction. It's more like Stones of Blood, isn't it? It starts off yes, sort of gothic that's horror, exactly it. and then it becomes more science fiction. If it was going to be a Doctor Who, it's Stones of Blood. Um, it... And I really like the idea of the Diolix, which was this uh, sort of creature in many parts. And a part of him is his, like a part of the Diolix himself is his own jailer. Mm. I thought for, for Perry and Tucker, these were some pretty strong ideas, actually. I mean, that's leaning a bit in sort of the Jagger off, the sort of segmented being. Mm. But it was really, I thought it was quite clever. I didn't like the Wizard of Oz stuff. Oh, I did. It got a bit silly for me towards <laughs> the end. There was a bit where, where so basically. Um, Sally Ann's not Sally Ann what's her name <laughs> oh Claire the Claire Buckfield's, Buckfield's character. character 
Alison. <laughs> Alison. Um, so there's this sort of cliched bit at the beginning where the, her father's going, oh, she watches so many movies. Like, that's why she's having all these terrible dreams about satanic cultists and things. Oh, what the fuck she been watching? I dread to think. Devil rides out or something. <laughs> and I thought, oh, we're really going there. We're going down that route of, you know, uh, art imitating life. Was it life imitating art? You know what I mean? Anyways, the twist at the end is, is that because she's been watching so many movies, her favourite movie is The Wizard of Oz. And so the Diolix creates this sort of nevosphere environment, which is literally Oz. And you have poor um, Eleanor <laughs> come along. And uh, is it Eleanor or Helena? Eleanor. Eleanor. And she's accosted by a load of munchkins. And they're literally saying, no, we must take her to the city. No, we must kill her here. No, we must take her to the city. No, we must kill her. Well, I'll tell you what, I was laughing my head off. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? I thought that was going a bit silly. But it, it works in the would. context of what's happening in the in the world, in the in the spacey stuff. I thought we were going to lose Eleanor at the end, though, because they say something like, oh, you've got to stay here, because she's very much separate to John and Paul. They have their own story, and Eleanor goes off and does her own thing. She's left behind uh, and ends up in hyperspace and all this stuff investigating but I, it's grateful with all the leads i thought yeah I thought um, they were all really strong and they all had something to do eleanor's off uh, yeah. in a sort of a separate subplot with the diolix mm. you've got paul and john which are doing all the investigations in the village you've got i did think though are we really doing like another breakout story how many breakout well, stories thing. can you do she loses her powers doesn't she in the end well that was but then then that was where i was like okay this actually worked because it it shows you you can break out and then basically go back into the closet yeah. again, can't you? Because you can't... Yeah, every time someone breaks out, they've got to join the team and you can only have really the three leads, can't well, you? So you, you can't really keep meeting people breaking out, can you? Did you hear the line in The Ghost of Mendes where John says that people were breaking out so fast that they're actually dying? Oh, no. Yeah, he says, oh, right. he says at the beginning of that, we're losing a lot of tomorrow people at the moment because their minds can't handle it. They're breaking out so fast. Nobody's there to sort of Help them. wean them into it. Yeah. Mm. So that was quite interesting as well, I thought. But this this was just like, it had a bit of everything, didn't it? Yeah, a bit of space stuff, a, a bit, bit of horror. horror, a bit of whodunit. Mystery, whodunit. Yeah, because you don't, sus- I didn't suspect the vicar at all for a while. I, I only I had thought- two complaints about this. Okay. Uh, one, and it wasn't the Oz thing, because I thought that was quite fun at the end. Uh, one, I thought Paul was far too argumentative in this. He's always down. Every time like it cuts to him, he's like, oh, well, maybe you should know a bit more about the mythology of where you're from. And he's playing every scene like that. And I was like, oh, you're not fun to hang around with. And I found um, Gareth Thomas's father a bit too obstructive towards the end. No, I'm like, I liked him. He was all right. And he was, he was nice, but like... This is clearly going on around you. There is weird shit going on. He kept yeah. going, well, I don't understand what's going on. Oh, no. Oh, it can't be. No, it's impossible. So my Welsh accent is terrible. <laughs> but, you know, I was just like, oh, no, I, I thought it was all right. Get I with the program. Will you get with it? Like, this is clearly going on. And he's just like, where's my daughter? What's going on with my daughter? Mm. And to have two characters that were constantly sort of down, I was like, right. oh, that's a bit, a bit dreary. But because there was so much plot going on, and so many fun things. Um, the Diolix itself, I have to say, I thought it sounded like the devil from Minuet in Hell. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought as well. Choking on jelly. It was definitely he had this that sort voice. of weird effect. Yeah. I think it was the same actor. Charlie, right? my darling, my yeah. darling. But it sounded like he was choking on jelly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, uh, I thought this was... That's Toby Longworth. As a blueprint for episodes going ahead, I think this is a good template, Diolix. Yeah. Because I think it leans into everything you love from Doctor yep. Who, the sort of um, the juxtaposition of the everyday, the sort of horrific and the extraordinary. Mm. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. really good. Um, do you think um, Eleanor and Paul, are, there's always a bit of a thing, he's like, that you fancy, sir. Do you think that's just bantery dialogue or do you think something's going to happen? Oh, I didn't really notice any will they, won't they, between oh, okay. Eleanor and John. All right. Okay. Is... Not Eleanor and John, Eleanor and Paul, the new guy. Oh, no, Eleanor got jealous when John went on a date. <laughs> Didn't <laughs> oh, she? Yeah, it's a little bit weird. Oh, God, go and enjoy yourself. <laughs> but overall, this series has got a bit of everything, isn't it? All the these four stories, you can see every type of kind of story that the Tomorrow People can do. I, I had a double whammy with this. I, one, I was super surprised at, at how well produced these yes, audio dramas Yes, me too. Were. Yeah, I was expecting far cheaper. 
and how enjoyable they were. The and two, I'm surprised at how much production values aside, I have absolutely mm. bought into this premise and this show. So all I can say is bring on series two. Yeah, I mean, I'll say I'm not a fan of the Tomorrow People, but I would definitely want to listen to the series two and oh, carry I think, on with these characters you know what, and get to know them a bit more. I'm on the verge of breaking out as a oh fan. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I might, I might be a fan of the Tomorrow People. I, yeah, I don't think I'd go that far, but I would enjoy listening to them. Yeah, it's, it's certainly been um, an unexpectedly enjoyable yes. diversion. Yeah, it's a shame you can't get these as well. Yeah, you know? I know. Sort it out, Big Finish. Yeah. Get the license back. Try and find them. Get these them. back on the market. Mm. As you know, it's kind of enticing, you know, we've got them and no one else has. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no one's going to know what we're talking about on these reviews. Well, that's why they're going to listen. <laughs> Um, well, well, we haven't got a doco ho, have we? Because you no, haven't doco ho. No. There's no continuity really, apart from to say that they've happened straight after the seventies <laughs> TV series. So I'm not going to do my continuity corner. No. Can I well, just say I'm very excited because guess where we're heading next. So we're going back to Doctor Who. Yes. Now back to the main range. Next time. Well, so very adventures. quickly, I Which will one say is it? it's the month. It's the main range. At this point. Yeah, okay. I'm calling it the main range. Yeah, we'll uh, do that. So we're doing four Doctor Who's next time. Oh my god! Uh, and they are. Oh, we'll do some quoting. You ready? Uh, Luguru. Uh, and I will marry you, Doctor. Dust breeding. Oh my god! Was that was Caroline John's character in that? Yes, I'm Mr. Sita. Blood Tide. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> it's Helen Goldwyn. You ready? <laughs> Emilio was riding with devils. And Project Twilight. Oh, my God. Um, you're inhuman. Shut up. <laughs> you don't know the meaning of the word. <laughs> well, there we go. I think we need to join out of here. Join the saps. Yeah. Uh, and we'll finish big. I'm going to get breaking so, out immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can track these down, give Tomorrow People a try if you haven't even ever watched it. Well, just try and watch the TV series and let us know what you think on that. Even. Yeah. Oh, if no. you can't listen to these, because it's a different thing, but isn't I will it? say again, do, do try and seek these out. These are much better than you're probably going to think that they are. Mm. Oh, oh! Oh no! I've been kidnapped for the Twin Galactic Slave Trade! Uh, come on, Eleanor, let's go and help. <laughs> who was that? I don't know who I was. It was me, you've been a tomorrow person. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you you're next definitely time. homo superior. <laughs> don't forget to finish me! <laughs> 